Synology haven't updated their router line recently, so these items are a few years old. But let's see how they stand up in the second half of 2021. For anyone that follows this channel knows I do a lot on Unify, and even recently I did some on Ubiquiti's other ecosystem, Amplify. Now those download speeds, that model is really good. However, I really want to focus on some of the features that Synology offers with this mesh setup. So let me take you through what they are, then we can run through how to configure some of them. But before we do, let's have a look at the tech specs first. The MR2200AC is a mesh router. The connectivity includes one gigabit WAN, a one gigabit LAN port. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, but it does do 802.11.ac and it has one USB 3.0 port. Now with the USB, you can use it to store files. There are applications within the software that let you use it for different kinds of things, such as media servers, file servers, or even download BitTorrent files directly to it. Legal ones, of course. Synology App Store, there are a number of different apps that allow you to download for your router, such as Media Station, as I mentioned previously, VPN server, Safe Access, which we'll dive into a little bit later. The interface is really easy and simple to set up with guest access. This seems to be becoming more and more common, having a guest network for when you have friends and family over. Let's have a look at some of these features in action and how you would go about setting up this mesh router. Once you've unboxed your Synology mesh router and plugged it in, there's two ways you can get this set up. So you can either plug it in and connect to the SSID and go via web browser, or you can use the mobile app called DS Router. So firstly, we're gonna take a look at how to set it up through the browser. And also then when we come to setting up the mesh point, we'll have a look at how to set it up through the app. To start with, make sure the Synology mesh point has a blue light on it, and then we'll go ahead and try and join the network. So if I open network preferences on my machine, if we click on the drop down just here, you'll see there's one called Synology. And on the back of that itself, it gives you the password for the router. Just type in the password and you should hopefully go off and join that network. Once it's done that, we'll see what IP address it gives us and we'll connect to the default gateway of that network. So click on advanced, have a look at TCP IP and you can see what the default gateway is. So let's just open a web browser. We type in the address in there and it takes you to the portal itself. So once the router itself has loaded up, we can click start. So it takes you to the software page. If you've ever used a Synology NAS, it's something very similar in terms of how you set this up. So uh, let's just type in some details. Once you've typed in a username and password, you can click agree and click next. It's then gonna ask you for an SSID. Type in your SSID, you type in your password, um, tell you where it's going to be and then it says select your current location to get the full functionality so I'm guessing in some places there are some maybe some features that are restricted or maybe there's some other features available that might not necessarily be available in certain countries so once we've done that we click next okay and this is how you get the router this is how you choose how the router is going to function so yes it is a wireless router it's not the access point for external access to SRM, I'm just going to leave that as disabled for now and we'll click next. Internet connection, we'll just say give it an auto IP, let it pick up via DHCP. Click apply and now we'll give that a few minutes to get that set up. Once that is complete, you go ahead and rejoin to the new SSID. So let's go to network preferences. So inside wire test should now be available. So if we have a look here, click cancel. Let's just go to Wi-Fi and let's see, there it is. It's there, so let's just type in the password and join the network. Once you've joined that network, it says you should be able to log in. You can launch the mobile app, which is one, or you can log in via this address just here. So let's click on that, there you go. Here is your front page. So you would log in with your username and password you created earlier. All right, there you go. So you've um, it says you've set it up and you can add the Wi-Fi point now. So I do have an additional mesh router, but I'm not gonna add that just yet. So I'm gonna click start managing now. There you go. So welcome to SRM. It's showing you some of the bits here. We're just gonna quickly run through it. Click okay. 
we're just going to click here and have a look at the SRM update setting. So we're just going to make sure this is the latest and greatest. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and update this. I know the 1.277742 is a really old version. So I'm just going to click manually update here. Click OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that go off and do the update and we'll come back once it's complete. And there we go. That's updated. So let's go ahead and have a look if you've used Synology before you're very familiar with this sort of layout you know exactly this is how it this is how they use all of their NAS products this is how they're set up so let's have a look at the main menu and within here you can see file station SRM help package center log center control panel network center Wi-Fi connect tools advisory support center and safe access so let's start with safe access let's have a little look in here so what this basically allows you to do is set yourself up basically safe access. So if you have kids joining the network or you want to filter out certain sites, you can set up profiles for them to um, use the internet. So let's have a look at how you would do that. So we can start with a profile. So we'll click, we'll click plus. We can set this up for a user profile or a LAN profile or a guest profile and type it to use. So let's go user profile and click next. So we'll choose IW test, we'll click next. And um, yeah, we're going to assign it to the MacBook Pro I'm on. So let's go ahead and create. Okay, there we go. Click OK. And then we can go ahead and set whatever we want up. So we can set up an internet schedule. So we can actually restrict them with the time that they uh, can use it. I'm not going to go through all of it. I just want to show you the sort of features that I've mentioned within here earlier. Um, so internet schedule. Um, we have the time quota. We have the web filter so we can block inappropriate sites. So uh, it looks like there seems to be some preset ones. So there's child, employee, guest, or custom, however you want. And then you can add custom web filters if you want. Test uh, RW block, click next. And then down here you can choose. So um, adult, chat, drugs, hacking, remote control, or you name it, you can, you can pretty much block it all. So um, let's go ahead and click social networks. We'll click next. Um, if you want to add domains, so actually you can go back, uh, untick social network. If we actually go next, uh, let's type in bbc.co.uk. Add that. And let's type in facebook.com. There we go. We can select that. We've got the custom web filter on. Uh, and then there's safe search. So safe search is pretty much it just filters the results for you automatically So things like Google safe search or YouTube safe search they're already enabled. So um, you don't need to worry about uh, Any other content popping up from there So we click OK. So now that's actually set up on my laptop So I shouldn't actually be able to get to those websites. So if I just try bbc.co.uk there you go, shows the website's block, so this is really, really good. And you can submit a request if you want. Not quite sure where that request goes, but we'll submit one anyway. And if we just try again, Facebook, there you go, not able to access Facebook either. So let's go back to here. So if we just saw some notifications pop up here. So yeah, Facebook has been blocked. Uh, we've received a request, so actually it pops up in here. So you can see the request. So if we click show all. Um, it says you received a request. Okay, so it shows you underneath what's blocked and then it tells you you've received a request for it. So it actually shows you here um, how many times it was, what it was, what device it was. So, okay, so this is this is actually really good. I'm quite impressed with, with how detailed this is. It's quite good. So not just for your home. If you have this set up in your office, this is perfect for web filtering for what you need. And it looks like here, this is where you get the access request. So you can just click accept or reject. Fairly easy and straightforward. And you can customize the block page as well. So if you want to say you're not able, you can have your company logo on there, you're not able, you can put in a load of text. If you want it to go to a service desk or you, whatever you want to do, the options are there. So that's good with, uh, with safe access. Along with this, you have the notification settings that you can actually get it to email you if you've had any, um, we haven't set up an email in here yet, but um, if you have a website blocked or they're getting towards their quota or you've received a request, you can actually get all this information here. And then you have the backup and restore. So if you want to keep the file safe, if you're moving, say Synology do release another router and you're moving across, you can actually save this as well and export it. So that's safe search. 
we've seen a fire station a number of times, you know exactly how this works. So if you have a USB drive plugged in to your Synology router, you can actually set this up as file storage, so you can use it for various different things. You can have it for Windows file service, you can have it for FTP, web dev, whatever you want, all the services are here that you can enable. Within That's within the file station. Again, I'm not gonna go too much into these in advance, it's just to show you some of the features that are on here. Uh, network center, so this gives you all the networking information in here. I didn't see anything around VLANs or different networks. There just seems to be the local network and that is it. That's the only one you can use. If we go to Wi-Fi Connect here then, so we have the wireless network which is set up and this is what we set up earlier just down here. We have some advanced options down here which again, we're not going to go through at this point. Wi-Fi point, we don't have one yet. We're going to set that one up shortly. If you want to set up a guest network, those options are also here as well. So just having a quick look at the control panel, um, we can have a quick look in here. So just probably coming at a couple of the settings that we saw earlier. So we have user accounts. We have the storage and file services that I mentioned about earlier. Services, notifications. So this is where you would set up your email. So again, as I mentioned, you can get email notifications. Set that up here, SMS push notifications and anything advanced you can configure it in terms of what notifications you want. Then the last thing I want to show you is the security advisor. So I quickly ran this a second ago just before I uh, brought this up. What it does is it does a quick scan um, and it lets you know um, if anything needs updating. So email notifications are turned off so it failed on that. And auto blocker is disabled, not quite sure what auto blocker is. Um, and then it tells you what it is and how to enable it. You can constantly keep scanning your network to make sure we're up to date on terms of that side of things and you can say whether you want it for home or personal use or for work or business. Last but not least, the thing that we always see within Synology is the package center. So again, within here it has various functionalities so you can actually set up a VPN server if you want which is up here, uh, download station, DNS server, media server, cloud server, so whatever you want to set it up as, even a radius server if you want. Um, if you're having your users dial in remotely and you need that sort of level of service. So overall, the, the interface is fairly similar to what we're used to, which is what we see in Synology. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is try and set up the second point with my phone. So we're going to go ahead and join the existing network that we set up, so inside wire test. We go ahead and join that. So we'll give that a second while it joins and then we'll load the DS router app. There we go, that's joined. So we go to DS router. We're going to say manage existing, the account is inside wire, type in the password, click sign in and that's going to go ahead and go and log in. So that's set up just there. So this is the app, the overview, you can see you've got usage and network and then also along here you have some of the settings that we went through earlier. The one you're probably interested in though is Wi-Fi point. So in here you can see we have none, so we're going to click add now. And then you can select where you want them to be and you click next. It's going to tell you to make sure the blue light is flashing on the LED, uh, on the blue LED is flashing on the mesh point. That's already plugged in and ready, so we're going to go off and let that search for it. That's gone ahead and found it, so we click next. It's going to give it the model, model number and all the information about it. We click next and we click add now. And within a few clicks, we've automatically joined this as a mesh point. So now you can place this anywhere around your house and it will extend out your Wi-Fi coverage. Obviously, if it goes too far, it's going to warn you that it's too far away from the existing access point. Maybe you can add as many as you want, two, three, four, how many ever you want to add around the house to extend your network. So that's one advantage I like of having these individual mesh points is you can place as many as you want. And there we go, that's the setup complete of the access point. So now if we go back here, you can see they're both set up, they're both healthy, they've got green ticks. If we look at network map, it shows you as many access points that you have set up. You can obviously see them here. And if we go back to the desktop version, if we go to Wi-Fi connect, and if we go to Wi-Fi point as well, you can see on here, you have your two devices, you have um, Wi-Fi transmission, Wi-Fi receive rates, uh, along here you can see it's connected via 5 gigahertz to the first router and from the first router it's a wired uplink to the internet connection. If you ever wanted to test your Wi-Fi speeds, I've not done this before so I can just see what this is, you click on the access point, Wi-Fi performance test, test selected 
um, not quite sure. So, okay, so this goes from primary point to Wi-Fi point and from Wi-Fi point to primary point. There you go, so it tests, this, tests the throughput. So from primary to Wi-Fi point, about 230 megabits per second. And then that's testing the other way as well. So there you go, that's from primary to the Wi-Fi point, which is about 150 megabits per second. So not too bad. Um, so if you ever wanna test this where you have it set up, if it's too far away, well, this is how you do it, so you can see what sort of connectivity you're getting between them. Now, will Synology be releasing anything new in the future? Who knows? However, there are a couple of things to note. One, that there is no configurable VLANs on this router, so they're only there for your main network and your guest network. The web filtering is really good and easy to set up, so for those home or small business office needs, this is perfect. In terms of Wi-Fi strength itself, since the introduction of Wi-Fi 6, this doesn't really stand a chance. But with the mesh setup, this allows you to dot as many of these around as you need. The price of this unit is £128 in the UK and $140 in the US. The links are in the description below. One final note, it does allow you to pair this with Synology's other router, which is the RTC 2600 AC. So if you want to mix and match, you can also do that as well. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the description below on this unit. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.